So, let us discuss the last heat treatment in our list of heat treatments and that is tempering. Now, tempering we showed when I drew the time, time temperature diagram. temperature versus time. So, we heat the alloy above the eutectoid temperature for eutectoid steel, it has to be above the eutectoid temperature such that you form austenite. So, the heating was for op forming of the austenite and when you had full austenite then you quenched. So, holding is really for forming austenite. So, sometimes this step is called austenitizing. Austenitizing is the holding step, and then here we are quenching. And quenching produces a smart inside gives us martensite and then if we heat this to some temperature. Now, obviously, to what temperature we will heat? So, if we heat it again above austenite temperature. So, notice we have formed martensite here. Let me write M for martensite. So, if I heat it again above T e, then the whole purpose of holding and quenching was lost because uh, we will again form austenite. So, we in tempering we do not go about E. So, we hold it below T the eutectoid temperature for some time and then again cool. So, this step is tempering. So, we can say tempering is heating a quenched specimen or quenched let, it, let me call it quenched steel and quenched steel below below the eutectoid temperature. But what this heating achieves? Let us look at martensite was an unstable phage, and if we are heating it, so martensite forms. So, let us look at the phase diagram again. And carbon phase diagram. So, in this phase diagram, if I and if I take austenite steel, so if I cool slowly, I would have formed alpha plus Fe 3 C. Since I quenched, I avoided the formation of alpha plus Fe 3 C and formed a metastable phage martensite. 
but now if I take that Martin psi to a temperature below this T e the eutectoid temperature and heat it then again the unstable phase or the metastable phase Martin psi will tend to transform to alpha plus F e 3 C. So, in tempering the result of the tempering is temperature to transform Martin side to alpha plus F e 3 C. So, let us say that we have austenite and we quenched it. So, we formed martensite and now we are tempering it to produce alpha plus F e 3 C. So, a question may come to your minds that why are we going through this circuitous route that first we quench to form a metastable phase Martin site which was hard, but was also brittle and then we again heat it. So, there is an additional cost, additional time involved to get alpha plus F e 3 C. If alpha plus F e 3 C was what was desired, we could have directly got by cooling of gamma. Slow cooling of gamma directly would have given me alpha plus F e 3 C without going through this intermediate um, Martin site, without going through that excessive effort and cost of quenching. So, if as, as we have seen that uh, slow cool will give me coarse pearlite by annealing or fine pearlite by normalizing. So, I could have got alpha plus F e 3 C simply by direct by direct cooling of gamma, there is no need to quench and temper. But the thing is that this alpha plus F e 3 C which you are getting is not pearlite, just like you saw in bainite, this is also not pearlite. this is not pearlite. This microstructure alpha plus F e 3 C is called tempered martensite. So, distinguish it from pearlite, it is called tempered martensite. And the description of this tempered Martin site is that F e 3 C are in the form of fine particles. So, tempered Martin site is fine particles of F e 3 C. alpha matrix. So, what it achieves in terms of uh, mechanical properties is that the hardness is reduced, but at the same time brittleness is also reduced. So, martensite was good because it was very hard, but at the same time it was bad because it was brittle. So, for many engineering application we cannot use a brittle phage like martensite. However, when we temper it, we are producing uh, alpha plus F e 3 C mixture and the distribution, the size and the distribution of these F e 3 C particles in the alpha matrix will depend upon at what temperature and for how long you are tempering. So, tempering has two variables, the temperature 
and the time. So, we have two controls, uh, two variables to control temperature and time and depending on the way we control this, we will get uh, particles of uh, Fe 3 C in different sizes and different distribution. So, tempering produces tempered martensite with lower hardness than martensite. but better toughness and ductility, better toughness and ductility. ductility. Now, how much the hardness will reduce and how much ductility you will gain depends on this temperature and time. So, tempering temperature and time control the reduction in hardness. an improvement in ductility. So, and higher the tempering temperature, temperature and higher the tempering time, lower is the hardness and better is the ductility. So, this way um, you can control. So, you have a extra control in quenching you did not have the control. So, you produced a hard and brittle martensite, but then you can reduce its hardness and hardness will not be reduced when hardness is reduction of hardness is there. The hardness will not go down to the lower value which you will achieve in annealing or normalizing. So, you still have higher hardness, but you have better ductility if you temper the martensite.